so in relation to NFT, you can use that and make a GIF out of it and sell the GIF as an NFT. Mm -hmm. Or you could okay. use like a, a capture of it and give it to N uh, and make an NFT out of it. Or mm -hmm. like, you know how there's some NFTs that they give you um, a collectible that you can acquire with your hands. So like that could be something else. But usually you just make a GIF or a visual with and make that into an NFT. Like right. the NFT would be the GIF or the visual. And then yeah. um, a physical might be like a poster. It could be a sealed poster. Yeah, some people, what they'll do is they'll make like a official sealed poster that as a collectible that, or like a shirt or a hat, you know, something sure. else. Yeah. A coin itself. Yeah. <laughs> yep. yeah, sometimes people do that. They'll add a collectible to their NFT art. And if, if it reaches, if the data reaches a critical level, you might be able to make it dynamically available like maybe there's good news or bad news and that dynamic aspect could be unleashed for a certain window of time to call people's attention to good news or maybe bad news or hopefully good news and then it could be turned off again for the art you know for the effect for the who knows maybe that's too early that's good Cool. So, yay, that was what I had to say. <laughs> um, can Back NFTs on, be Melissa. websites? Hmm? Yes. Can an NFT be a website? Yeah, um, private domain specifically. Um, oh, really? Private domain that could be like key access or something. Exactly. Password With protected, the NFTs sold you, yeah. as the key. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, because then you can if, link up entire experiences, you know, that like mm -hmm. virtual that's experiences. Yeah, yeah. Data that there, can be shifted cool... and changed in time. Yep. Yeah, so and that's only accessible to those who have the key. As yeah. opposed to a snapshot like a GIF or a poster. Yeah, yeah, exactly. All, yeah. Of those. all of the above. That's the thing. Yeah, they're, they're such, it's such a flexible format. It's like what we're seeing at, you know, traditional art auctions where it's like, you know, last week a, a painter or a sculptor sold a sculpture that doesn't exist for thirty-six thousand dollars, an invisible doesn't sculpture. Exist, you know, just and, space, emptied it. Yeah, yeah. Hmm. Oh, so, which is to say that it's infinitely malleable. Yeah, the banana, the banana basil uh, at the start uh, of twenty twenty. Well, if yeah. they own it, uh, it's not inconceivable that three D three D printing, for example, could make a real, actual model of it, right? They own rights to it. They could potentially have it, make it into something that you can touch, right? Three D like, model, what? But of, of, I mean, if it's something that's conducive to it, if the sculpture, quote unquote, is something they really want to have, they own rights to it. So they could probably get a three D printer, and make that sculpture. It would like, just have to be like the three D printing somatics shared, in some way, right? Well, I mean. If they own the rights map. to it, they mm -hmm. could probably do what they want with it in, in the way they want it, want to experience it, right? I would think, but why not, right? Absolutely right. possible. Yeah, so, so in later calls, we're gonna do some deep dives on the, um, like the, technical aspects of minting NFTs, what's possible, what's legally feasible, you know, cause like say for instance, some of the painters here, Sam being one of them, you know, and then we artists like Jessica and what have you, uh, who are like long time established painters with a long track record of selling, you know, included in the smart contract when someone purchases an NFT is that quote unquote collectible element, you know, which is like the, the, yeah. the contract says in the next 12 months, this painting will be delivered to your home, et cetera, or you can come pick it up from X, Y, and Z studio, um, you know, but you're, but you're still buying the digital contract. You know, that's what the, the non-fungible token is. And then the, the mm. included in that contract can be the physical object. Another cool idea is I, I just had this idea is that say someone like the Metropolitan Museum of Art says, I love that. We want to purchase it for our private collection. Uh, they own it. And then they get, they could then send it to somewhere else like the de young museum 
uh, which comes first. First, uh, the artists maybe the artist becomes a known quantity, and at that point they decide to own it outright. But it is also displayed in person at a museum. It's a manifestation of that. I, I don't know. If maybe that's too futuristic, but I would say why not? Right? Be something that travels to other museums, and yet it's it's its rights is are, are backed up in the blockchain, which is where it was born. <laughs> Maybe that's, um, yeah, I don't see why not. It could be actual art that could be enjoyed in person as well yeah. as virtual. Even Absolutely, Eckert. Ownership is established in the blockchain. Yeah, that's really what the, the contracts are for. It's to establish a chain of ownership. And, mm -hmm. you know, in a, a minimat, like say for instance, the Beeple art that sold the collection of 5,000 days that sold for 69 million. Um, these are viewable artifacts. It's just that someone owns owns the rights to them. Um, right. CJ, I think you had something to add. No, um, no, I just was uh, referring to Melissa's uh, work and um, but nothing to add at this time. No problem. Cool. So um, yeah, we're going in on some of some of the folks' uh, visions here. John, what, what is uh, our timeline for this call? We're, we're at 1251 my time, 1151 Pacific. We are um, good till 1230, so we have another 40 minutes awesome. if people want to want to awesome. go and, you know, to dive deeper. Cool. Uh, so who's next? Who wants to share where they're at with their, uh, they're sketching their vision? Hey, you mind? Um, it's Paul. Sorry. I, I didn't really get to go before I was like, when Jenny came on, I was really excited and-, and Yeah, you passed the mic to her. Take, yeah, take your time I've, now. I have an anxiety disorder, so, you know. <laughs> um, so I wanted to share a photo if I could, and I promise I'll give the host, you know, back to John. Um, totally, totally. Thanks, thanks. That's weird, because when I do Zoom meetings, we, you know, I didn't know that hosts have to share, are the only ones that can share a picture. That's so strange. Like, I wonder why they, they make you do that in here, but it's all good. It's all good. So, so this is, um, I looked up like healthcare, you know, how to spread awareness for raising, you know, the, the, like the wage, like, a, so if you look at the, at, at the bottom, uh, this is like for healthcare workers and home care workers, it says in the bottom, now we are on a path to a true living wage, you know, and, um, you know, fifteen dollars an hour as a as a home care worker or a healthcare worker. You know, I just don't see how that gives you like a way to live, and then you have to take care of someone or give someone assistance. Because if you're going to be assisting somebody and you're met and and you're, you know, you can't even feed your family, and then you come to work and you're making minimum wage, $15 an hour in New York, or where, you know, even less in, in other parts of the country, how are you going to be mentally able yourself to like put all that in the back? Cause you know, even if you're doing my, cause I teach mindfulness and I, you know, I do meditation classes, even with all the mindfulness that I can, you know, um, advise somebody, you know, if, if, if you're going to be kicked out of your house, cause you're not making any money, how am I going to go ahead? And, you know, and I have a five-year-old son and, you know, my wife is, you know, is working. How am I supposed to be there for, for my um, participants and help them get through what they're getting through if I, you know, can't even pay my rent. So I don't understand how the system works where meant, you know, you know, peer, peer supporters and, and uh, like aren't making any money. Like we're supposed to just be like, well, I'm in it for the cause. And I'm, I'm here to just, you know, make sure everybody is going through. Cause as a peer supporter, what you're doing is it's lived experience. So lived experience is, you know, like um, if you were, let's say like a heroin addict or something, and you know, you are now here to assist somebody who is also a heroin addict. You're not giving them advice on how to get through their habit. You're just giving some of your lived experience like oh I did you know this is what I did to get through whatever I was dealing with and 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 you know so you're not like a psychiatrist you're not you're not really a social worker you're not a therapist you're just like there to give them assistance but anyway if I'm making minimum wage you know like I don't even want to go to work sometimes so I'm hoping that with the art that I've created I can you know, like just doing this, 
my 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 mission is that I'm promoting that art is a way for artists to do mindful, you know, hobbies. Like if I'm gonna get a crossword puzzle, I'll do a crossword puzzle. If I'm gonna get a coloring book, I don't do a coloring book. You're practicing mindfulness right there. You're like in the moment, because that's what mindfulness is in the moment. You know, you're just, you know, you're in the moment. You're not thinking about your bills. You're not thinking about how you're gonna pay for your kids tuition. You're just thinking about the art project that you're doing. So, you know, that's why I came in this and hopefully um, to spread awareness. So that's why I put the picture up because it's, it's you know, it's, it's really strange how, you know, I mean, I can go over the tangent and be like, how can retail workers make minimum wage and they've got control of making your food, you know, at the, the people that come in and, you know, their, their jobs are the hardest and they work the most. Um, you could be a real uh, you could be a real estate agent and you know for an hour you show the house and now you just made a couple thousand dollars which is amazing which is great shouldn't it be like that also for retail workers shouldn't they get paid thousands of dollars an hour because which is not going to happen because there's no money available for that so I, I'm just saying that if there's a way to spread awareness that the state because my, my company is Baltic Street Baltic Street is my company. We're, we're like the number one peer, it's not my company, I work for them. We're the number one peer run organization in New York and they pay us the least because they have contracts and contracts come in and the contracts say, well, you can pay your four employees $15 an hour, but the, you know, it doesn't make any sense. So whatever it is, it is. And you just got to go through life saying it is what it is. But I'm hoping to spread some kind of awareness, awareness for healthcare workers you know, with this project, um, that it's just like, it's not, it's not doable, you know, but people do it anyway, because they truck along and they just get through the day. But if they're, make, if they're not making any money, how are they going to help anybody else? So I'm not saying this is a profit thing only, but this is definitely a way to spread awareness. So thanks for letting me share. I really, really appreciate it. You know, it's not a lot, <laughs> but that's my, I'll get off my soapbox. So no, that's yeah. super inspiring stuff, Paul. And and thank you for taking the time to share it. You really, you know, we can, we can, does anyone have any feedback for him? We can bounce on, on your stuff for a minute before we move on. Thanks. Yeah, I would love to see someone who has the potential, which is all of us really have creative potential. And then someone is dabbling in art, is self-taught and all of a sudden becomes the next grandma Moses, for example. And if that happens and they're prepared for this, they'll be covered from the get-go retroactively. Uh, their art will be, will be cure, uh, will, will have, they'll have rights to it. And those rights can be uh, fiduciary, you know, the responsibility, the, the value can be, uh, can be backed up. And they can, obviously they could have it all to themselves, but to the degree they're, they're part of a union, for example, it could be shared with the union. It, there's so many possibilities, I would say, is the sense I get. That's just what I'm thinking. So it's, it's again, it's really exciting what we could punch, potentially do with these, these vehicles. For the future. Go ahead. Is it possible that we can cross over? Uh, in other words, can one member be, a, be on several different teams? Yep. Because um, I'm definitely looking at in the at the moment in finding some more creative artists so yep i have uh, i have an interest in finding somebody who's i mean i definitely want to recruit and find somebody that ha possibly hasn't joined us yet but for those who have um i'd definitely like to to engage some of those as well is there a, a master roster that is available that we could view and get in contact yeah, we, we have a master roster, but we don't give out people's email addresses unless they accept it. So we're keeping a call of communication on Discord where you're free to talk with anybody in the in this space. Okay, great. Great question, though. Yeah, and um, honestly, the cross-pollination is one of the key aspects, you know, because it's like uh, as people hone their abilities as a pollinator, as a marketing, you know, get more and more familiar with the NFT technology, then you can apply those skills, you know, broadly. It doesn't just have to be uh, towards one art piece or one vertical. Sure. Yeah. So one thing I'd love to talk about as we're sketching our visions is um, 
you know, how people are feeling about the uh, regenerative, you know, uh, philanthropic element and like where they, where they see their work tying in. So obviously on the, the, Hudson, the Hudson teams, you know, we're talking about uh, regenerating this river and doing environmental work. Um, but one of the most popular things with, that people signed up for uh, in the lead up to June 1st was decarceration, you know, um, and that's something that's just super inspiring to me. I'm like deep, ass deep in, in decolonization, like anti-racist reading, you know, and I'm like having my mind blown continually, just the, the premises make me cry, not, not to mention the, the texts. Um, and yeah, just uh, checking in with people on, on where they're at you know, and what's inspiring them uh, in terms of the, the world changing element that we're doing here. I know for me personally, I'm definitely inspired. Um, I have a lot of emotions when it comes to homeless people. Uh, I definitely think there's way, there's obviously way too many that are homeless today. Um, there's too much money being sent to large organizations um, that do not use the money wisely. It ends up getting, being eaten up in administrative cost, and overpaying CEOs and executives of nonprofits. And the money never gets to the people that really need it, the ones that live in tents on the streets. And I think it's a terrible problem. And I think my, you know, any money that I can earn through this process and we can make uh, through this process, I want to funnel it as much as I can to the homeless community. Um, everyone deserves to live in a comfortable a place, a roof over their head, a comfortable bed to sleep at at night. Everyone deserves that. No one should go without. Um, and that's that's my greatest passion right now is helping those people, those those communities. And it seems to happen in some of the largest of cities, San Francisco, L.A., San Diego, where I live. Um, some of the big metropolitan areas, because it is some of the most expensive places to live. And with people being one paycheck away from being homeless, it's not, it's not easy to imagine why the homelessness and the numbers of homelessness continue to rise, um, especially in this economic time. So that's my passion. Anybody want to hop on board with my passion of helping the homeless? I would love to have you. Um, anybody would like to be creative geniuses in my group, we would love to have you as well. Beautifully said, CJ. I'm glad we're recording all of this because it's really like eloquent and and uh, insightful. Where where are you based, by the way? Uh, San Diego. Cool. Yeah, Cali, up and down the coast, man. God, you know, I'm I'm familiar uh, having spent time with John in Berkeley just uh, before the pandemic. You know, with the the mm -hmm horrifying levels of, of uh, homelessness that are occurring in the San Francisco Bay Area right now, but I'm sure it's yeah. a similar story in the South. Uh, oh, it know, is. It's, just... it, it's crazy. And, I, and I've traveled so to so many places and I've seen it all. People, you know, living on side of freeways, under overpasses. I mean, in every possible place, um, even in places where you wouldn't expect it, nice areas. Like I was driving down the street today here in La Jolla, and there was a guy sleeping on the sidewalk. Um, he had his, he had his uh, blankets and his, you know, sleeping bag. And I was like, wow, like right in the middle of nowhere and you don't expect it. Um, and I was like, wow, is he, is he okay or is he just sleeping? I, you know, I, and so you, you see those circumstances and those um, situations arise. And over the years, I've had the opportunity to travel to places like Haiti and, and other um, underserved areas and be able to talk to people wherever I, wherever I travel to. I try to engage in conversation with the homeless to try to get their story and uh, to truly understand um, you know, what, what is going on in their life and what impacted their life. And a lot of times people don't have family. They don't have friends, you know. Once you lose a cell phone in that homeless world, or if you run out of money and you can't pay your cell phone bill, like you, the, the ability to communicate with people to find help, you are just literally helpless. Um, and that's just an example of how people end up in these rabbit holes of, of homelessness and hopelessness because they, they don't have a way to communicate with people people that they love, family and friends who are, who are who live in different places. So 
Um, well, well, the Obama so. program, the, the Obama did come out with a um, phone program for people that are on government assistance that was actually quite effective at, at getting phones in the hands of the homeless population. I personally, yes, I personally explored um, homelessness as a path of transformation and lived in Central Park while I was in, in, in New York City and I was consulting still for a $60 million restaurant company. And so I lived in Central Park for a period of time for about four or four months. So um, it, was, it was different because I did have some means and I was able to have a um, storage container and dress in camouflage at night and then come back and shower at a gym that I paid for and, and get dressed in, in, in button down shirt and go to work in the evening. But what I learned from that was, A, I do like nature. I do like being in the trees and stuff like that, but. Uh, right. And I think that you're probably, you're probably one of the few that out there that would have the wherewithal and the, the knowledge to know where your resources are. And I think there's a lot of people out there that just don't have the resources, don't have yeah. the knowledge of where to go. Cognizance. Cognizance. Yeah. Um, yeah. Yeah. There's a lot of mental illness, you know, and then, then a lot right. of darkness and despair. Um, yeah. Yeah. And I think of and that with like the ASPCA, like does the ASPCA, are they really helping animals or like the WWF? <laughs> like I used to work for the WWE, by the way, but anyway, that's another story. Uh, WWF, like right when they changed uh, to the WWE, sure. but they, do they really help like you know, does the WWF really help the uh, animals? So, like, I would want to donate money to like all these charities to the homeless and to the. But would it really do good? So, that's all I wanted to say. Like, you know, like, hopefully it yeah. works when you give it to the charities. Like, you, you can know. even start your own startup, well, Paul. Like, you don't have to just give to WWF if you don't like the Wild World Wildlife Foundation. You can give to someone who's creating an Earth startup that you support. So like the, what we what we're doing is we're unlinking the 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 hook from finance to from the financiers to the artists and giving creators the opportunity to take creativity and turn it into capital for social transformation. Mm, perfect. That's and beautiful. It's a grassroots beautiful. placement. You know, it's it's all about putting the money in the hands of, of people who actually care to use the money and the resources on a local level, not on these national levels where money gets lost and in, in, in lost in distribution or not even distributed to the areas. So it's really a local level um, focus of where the money should go. People that live in LA, San Francisco, or wherever it is, those are the people that truly know the situation, know how to help. They wear boots on the ground. They're the ones that are gonna go out, buy supplies, actually help homeless people. We realize the homeless, issue needs a, a really extreme and a very in-depth roadmap to help them uh, because there's so many varying reasons why people become homeless. Well, but, yeah, I mean, we, we uh, could, we, if we went the anarcho route, forgive me for just being real for a moment, if yeah. you guys are triggered yeah. by that, sorry, um, and just house people. Uh, if we have the capital, we, it's the cheapest way to house people is through t building tiny homes, four bucks a square foot, basically. If we They're have awesome. a shit, I'm forgetting my language. If we have a crap ton of capital, we can just build a crap ton of homes and slap the whatever organization in who gets stands in our way in behind and tell them to step stand down. I think the state of California would be a good deep challenge if we could get some real money in. Cause just like, this is a place that claims a liberal ethos yet yeah. we're stepping on people's shit every goddamn day. And, yeah. and, 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 you know, I mean, this one party monoculture here this Democratic Party monoculture is just sickening, where they'll police your goddamn speech, but they won't house the motherfuckers on the goddamn sidewalk. Forgive my language, but it <laughs> pisses me off. You know what I mean? Like, what well, that we fire, do you know, you know, we, we, we yeah. channel it. We channel it into art and we channel it into action. And I think that's really uh, one of the most exciting parts about not just um, the the NFT vision, you know, and the blockchain evolutionary pathway for, for currency distribution and, and wealth di redistribution. But it's like exactly what I was, dis was discussing earlier in this call, where it's like decentralizing philanthropy, cutting out the middleman, cutting out the self-congratulatory bureaucrats and, and elites, and getting the capital that is required for change 
into the hands of those who know how to use it for change. It's not, you know, not getting bogged down in marketing costs, not getting bogged down in, you know, expensive charity auctions and dinners and black tie events. It's like, right. you know, when, when in this auction that we're conducting later uh, in July, 25% of every piece sold is going to reach the intended target, you know, and so that's going to be something we, we discuss at length, you know, and, and there's, there's logistics to make sure that that happens and that we don't end up talking more than we, you know, delivering less than we, we are capable of. It's like, we're going to do what it, what is required to get 25% of this uh, auction, you know, all of the proceeds into these change making agents hands. And, and that, the and other that goes piece for the homelessness. Thank you, Sam. The other piece is in I, Gentry's, I, Gentry's running this part is that we're going to make sure in our contracts it's written that we're, that you capture when you give the money away to the cause you're most inspired by. We want to capture that on video because that is the transformational moment is Gentry calls it the money shot in the production. When you artists are in charge of capital deployment to transform the world and we get to hear how that ends up impacting that low, that community boots on the ground. That's the most inspiring mm -hmm. thing about this. I'll just share this briefly. I don't know if anyone here has heard of Lava May, but this woman actually met her at a bar. I was just a chance encounter with a friend on Mission Street. He said, oh, I'm going to this event. And, um, but he ended up not making it. So I went to it and this woman just really soft-spoken. She had this idea, she came from the arts community. Her name is Denise Sandoval. Uh, she was an arts community executive. And she came up with this idea, long story short, they invented uh, a, a bus, a repurposed bus that they got for free from Muni and they put in a shower. It had never been done before. They didn't even know if they could do it. Long story short, it's now in cities across California. And I think it's in Austin, they have it, uh, They had their own independent initiative in that regard, but check it out. It's called Lava May, which in Spanish, I guess means wash, my, wash myself or, but anyway, it's an ongoing thing. I told her about this, this class uh, right before it happened. Generally, she gets right back to me. She didn't this time. I think this could be a great opportunity for organizations like hers to really help the homeless in more ways than it has even uh, so far. You know, they've gotten lots of money from arts, from organizations, and she keeps getting more and more honors and expanding it further. But maybe there are ways for her to plug in yet with this program. So, um, and she's done a lot for the homeless. I mean, just the fact that they can clean them the way we can plug them, maybe we can plug them in um, yet. Um, they have their hands full, no doubt, but maybe there's a way we can collaborate. So just check out the websites, Lava May. I think that they're, they're in LA and there are many other communities that are going strong. So, might be an angle to get people. There, there really are a lot of, uh, you know, boots on the ground, local community organizers and um, groups that do this. So um, that's great. And I think that's Lava Maze is just one great example of that. So thanks for sharing that. Yeah, maybe uh, if they take this to an NFT level and they, have, they don't have the bandwidth, we could do, the, do it for them. You know, I'm sure it could help globalize this. Now they call it X for a reason, probably, because they've taken it to the expanding it way beyond what they initially thought it could be. But maybe it's not international enough yet. Maybe that's part of its future. And we'd help uh, bankroll it through, uh, through this mechanism. If I could set up a call with her, I could probably, I knew is uh, she's based in San Francisco, Denise Sandoval. Pretty amazing story. I just unbelievable. Love that, Eckert. Thank you yeah, so I'm much. It up um, now. Yeah, that's yeah. something to definitely follow up on. And I think we'd be really interested uh, in a call. We'll, we'll talk about that. Um, right. Yeah, after this space. So what sure. we have, the we have another 15 minutes or so. And I just want to open the floor, you know, uh, or, or as we still haven't heard from you, if anyone who hasn't, uh, had their voice centered at this point. It uh, felt like a little bit of a boys club the last few minutes um, to um, talk about how it's going 
you know, what, what their vision, where you're at with your sketch or vision, or of course we're in week two, you know, some people like Kelly and Eric uh, and Melissa are on the stage of building their teams, you know, so if there's any assistance we can give any advice that is desired, uh, floors open for, for anyone on the call to, uh, you know, talk further about their, their vision and, and their team building process. I, I, I would say um, I'm too, I, I think I mentioned this to John, I'm, I'm one of these people who could probably conceivably be in more, more teams than one simultaneously. I don't know that I need the confusion, but I'll just put it out there. Um, I have a lot of sides to it I can uh, value that I can offer, but I have limited time. So um, exactly. I, I just, yeah, that, that's all I, want, I wanted to share. Well, um, well, I think that um, this is going to this organization is going to grow immensely. I, I think we just scratched the surface um, on all levels. Ideas. CJ, Ors, Ors, Ors hasn't spoken yet, and we just wanted to hear Ors' voice. If that's okay, because we want to hear yes, voices. Yes, but CJ, you're okay. completely right. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you, Ors. Hi, welcome. Hi, everybody. Um, well. My name is actually Randall or Smosk's board from, uh, well, that name is, is just there. Um, anyway, I'm working with Meli. Um, yeah, so she has already spoken about our, our vision and um, we're gonna work with um, uh, Regeneration and reforestation uh, projects um, in Costa Rica, and uh, yeah, we're actually on the process of creating a um, three D sculpture uh, that is going to be also part of if um, illustration is going to be um, trying to simulate a lot of organic elements into a model that could actually be later on be placed uh, on a website. And um, yeah, I don't know what else, what else to say, but just to say. I hi. mean, it, sound, it sounds epic. Yeah, and I had no idea that I had some fellow Costa Ricans in here. What's up, man? I, I live in, uh, in Chimero de Rivas, um, just, just up the mountain from San Isidro. Uh, where are you? Or where are you, Randall? Oh, don't, don't know. Um, I'm from Cartago. 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 See. Uh, yeah. yeah. The the old capital. No. Yeah. yeah, that's right. It's beautiful so, there. Cool. Yeah, Coolest right. market in the country, I would say. <laughs> yeah, it's like pretty, the central market in the, in Cartago. Yeah, I love it. Awesome. And yeah. are do you know um, Ronnie Castillo and uh, Lila Bear? The the team. Uh, Ronnie has the Fundacion uh, Madre Tierra Verde, and Lila has this organization, uh, Gaia Protection. Um, they're two amazing. Uh, Lila is Costa Rican because she, you know, she's Tika by way of her parent, her German parents. She was born here. But then Ronnie is, is true blue Tico. Yeah, yeah, we should definitely right follow up. And I would love to connect you, especially with Ronnie, uh, who's doing major reforestation work. He's actually been appointed the caretaker of uh, something like a 10,000 hectare his foundation has been appointed the caretaker of 10,000 hectare forest um, down like at that entrance, uh, Sierpe, you know, the entrance to the Osa, that, that wetlands down there. Um, so that's amazing. I, I didn't know that there were fellow, uh, you know, uh, Costa Rican yeah. residents over here. Yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm a gringo, but I've, I've lived here the last two years and uh, I'm on my way with the Costa Rican government lets me to being a, a full-time resident. Yeah, very good. Yeah, it's a nice place to actually live. So, very nice. Yeah, amazing place. I just so grateful. Awesome to be connected. Uh, yeah, and would love to to do a little breakout chat and uh, get get the down low on what you're working on. And same Thank same you. with you, Melly. So maybe we can. We'll, we'll I'll give you guys my email in the chat, and you guys can send me something. Okay. Thank you. Um, Thank you. Can I jump in just real quick? Please take your time. Please, Melin, yeah. Yeah, no, just uh, in terms of what we are creating, uh, our um, 3D sculpture, I think I mentioned it, it last week, but 
Yeah, we want to make it be like a, a trigger for an AR animation okay. with sound. And um, we want to use voxels. So today the team is going to get together in a workshop that Randall is going to give later tonight. And we're going to learn a little bit how to work with this uh, software. And um, right now we are like, making some drawings uh, to think about what we want to, how we want our uh, expanded sculpture look like. So yeah, we're working on it. We're working on that totem. So, so here's an example of a team that not only has their vision and has their team, but is in the iteration process of their design work. And so, you know, this is like, you guys are a little bit ahead of the curve, I would say. Um, you know, we're hope we would imagine that probably by like a week or, or 10 days from now, that's where all teams are going to be at, where it's like, they know who's on the team, they know what they're making. And now it's just making it the best that they can in advance of the, the July 15th deadline. So awesome. Thank you so much for sharing that. Uh, super inspiring. And it looks like we have someone who just uh, jumped on the call. Chanel, are you there? Hi, yes, I'm here. I'm coming here from New York City. Oh, uh, another place I'm connected to. That's my hometown and, and where John and I met years ago. What What's up? How is it going? Uh, we've, we've been on this call for about an hour and change now, um, to doing discussing people's visions and their team building process. So maybe you could give us a little bit of uh, where you're at. I wish I could say that I was an artist or an incubator here, but I'm really coming in as a support. I was late. I'm actually a teacher, so I was in class teaching. Um, but I would just want to jump Thank in. You. My specialty is accessibility and accommodations for the disabled. So anything where you'll need me, my hands are free and I'm happy to help. Awesome. So how do you see that uh, connecting with um, like the, the art minting? Like, because obviously accessibility, yeah, that's a huge issue in general. Uh, but maybe you could just give, give me a little bit more context where, where how that's going to fit in with like the the NFT creation? That is a great question, Samuel, one I'm looking to answer as I see how teams are developed and just what kind of logistics are needed in order to get this launched. So I, I still don't quite know is the honest answer here, but I'm keeping my eyes and ears open. That's awesome. Thank you so much for being here. And you know, I can already see just thinking about it, uh, giving you a little bit of a ponder just the importance of like making stuff for the site disabled, you know, and, and where it's like, like detailed uh, inline descriptions of what people are purchasing, you know, what the, what the art is. Um, and yeah, like integrating audio only experiences, all kinds of stuff so that it just makes it, it broadens the audience and it makes it accessible to people. Um, and that's that just love it. So you're a teacher in New York City. I sure am. I teach kindergarten, the cutest grade. Yeah, where where at? I teach in Brooklyn, Crown Heights. In Crown Heights, cool. Yeah, I grew up in downtown Brooklyn. Oh, oh nice, Crown fellow Heights. Brooklynite. Yeah, it's down the road. Uh, and we have, a, I think we have a couple. Brooklyn was representing on this call a lot earlier. I think some of them might have had to go, but you know, we have we have Bushwick and uh, Williamsburg and what you know. Just the, the north side more representing, of course, we're, we're a group of artists, so <laughs> that's where half of them are going to live. I'm in uh, I'm in Bensonhurst, Brooklyn, so. Oh, there I'm you go. South over. side representing too, man. Yeah, South side. Yes. So uh, I give her a lot of credit. Like, that's, that's a tough job that she has. Yeah, thanks for your work, Chanel. I Eric, you were about it. to speak. Thank you so oh, much. I'm in Crown Heights as well, Chanel. I'm Prospect and Ralph, so not very far from you. Uh, Kelly over here is in bed -Stuy. I introduced Eric and Chanel already after uh, your your video work, Eric. Just yes, we have, a, we have a Facebook chain that I need to do. Right. Oh, we need to follow up on that, right? Yep. Yeah. Cool, gang. Well, we're taking ourselves. We, we filled the space beautifully impeccably i think we've covered a lot of ground you know both from the, the sketching the vision to building the teams you know getting a good sense of who's here what resources we're bringing to the table um 
And yeah, if there's any further specific questions, uh, people need assistance on their next steps. Uh, let's let's take the next couple of minutes for that. And John, yeah, you you take it over from here. Yeah, I was just um, I'm, I mean, because we're we're feeling this out, right? And we stretched out the sketch your vision, build your team portion a little longer. I think this is about action now. So I mean, next step, I'm sending out some information about the business brief process, and then we're definitely gonna have business masterminds as as coming up, you know, the next few weeks. But I don't think we need these calls. Like the point of the creation process is to create, you know, and if these calls aren't adding, you know, I, I guess I want to make this community, I'm exploring with the community now, whether we need these again. Do we need this next week or no? Well, it's good that we've got the Discord. So the Discord is really, really, really uh, easy to use. So maybe that's all we really need. Um, but it's good that we, we all meet each other face to face since we can't do it in person, but I'm up for doing it in person. I'll meet everybody at the park. Come to my house if you want to come chill. Uh, I'm I'm fully inoculated. So, <laughs> Seth mentioned that Discord and emails can be difficult, and I hear that. The thought is though, like this is about facilitating action, you know. And so, like, if there's visionaries you've been touched, moved, and inspired by, like I've been really touched, moved, inspired by Eric's team today. You know what I mean? Like the whole gambit of technical skill set, you know, like bright, vibrant energy, bioregional transformation. Like I'm loving that. Uh, you know, like I, 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 I we're gonna take action. These we we only want to be calling meetings that are needed to facilitate action. So, um, you know, I may may cancel next week. We can open it up for discussion on Discord. Um, it, like I said, marketing mastermind coming shortly. Win-win uh, agreements will be due July first now because we're working some things out a little bit on the back end. And this has been a really great experience. And then we're, we're actually, the next stage we're opening up to is we're gonna close the container of new entrants for the incubator. And we're gonna open up to artists who have pieces already, like Jessica Perlstein's already taken this role, where they're gonna donate their pieces to our auction or sell their pieces in our auction alongside us. So they're not creating something new, they're taking art inventory and applying it for impact. So Sam's gonna be really leading the charge with the marketing for that. And, and the other piece is we wanna to be touching, moving and inspiring the wealthy friends in, in our networks about, you know, about this, this upcoming art auction and, and get them looped into the communication process. Yeah, so for those of you who have, um, you know, people who'd be interested in supporting, like in, in making investments in the art, in the, and in the transformation that the arts that the art supports, which, by the way, is going to be an appreciative asset. You know, it's gonna, it's not like they're it's not like they're giving money away to charity. They're buying art that will go to charity, but then they're also receiving a token that will retain value and, and very likely gain value as time goes on. Um, I'm we're gonna have a landing page go live later today on the regenft.net site. Um, for people to register for the digital side of the auction. We're gonna be having holding this auction on July 25th, both in person and simultaneously digitally um, so that you know someone can be bidding on, on site at Ephemerile in the San Francisco Bay um, and then be outbid you know, by Tokyo, by New York, by London, you know, as, as we're doing it. So uh, it'll, be a, it'll be a global experience that'll also be hosted in person uh, in San Francisco or in, really in the water in the Sacramento uh, River Delta. Um, and you know, as for the calls, there, I think there's a value added piece, which is just like uh, beyond where we are just going into the logistics and the practicality, you know, how's everybody doing and what's the update. We also get the pieces like when CJ, you, you, you uh, discuss so eloquently, you know, the, the local impact of homelessness, you know, on your heart. And it's like, we don't get that if we're just on discord. So I, I, my, I favor, especially since like we were about two dozen today and out of a community of eight dozen or something um, that there will be different people that show up for the, these Wednesday calls. It's a great day to do it, Mercury's day. Um, so I'm in favor of holding them just as a forum for people to check in, say what's up, build relationships, yeah. you know, tell stories. 
Um, it doesn't have to be, it, it's not integral. It doesn't, and I think what you're saying is correct, John. It doesn't need to be integral to move on to the next step for you to be on this call. You can just go ahead and do it. You know, we have all the resources online. We're, we're, we're moving towards the auction one way or the other. Time is passing. Um, but like just as a community building, you know, and checkup. And then of course there are sometimes like Eckert puts himself out there and he's like, I'm a jack of all trades. I can do anything. Or Chanel puts herself out there. She's like, I'm going to be the one that, that uh, you know, makes this piece accessible to the disabled. And then suddenly there's another layer to your team, you know? So, so the community yeah. building aspect of these calls, I think has, has an inherent value. And so I'll, I'll be here and we can just go ahead. We're, we're past the, uh, 12.30 past killing time now. Uh, let's say same time, same place next week, you know, 11 a.m. Pacific, 2 p.m. Uh, Eastern, Wednesday the 23rd, which is, of course, mm -hmm. the day that Mercury goes erect for those who are astrologically inclined. Thanks, everybody, so much. Appreciate your time. Thank you, guys. Really appreciate you.